I want to welcome you to our worship service this Sabbath day. We are thankful that you've chosen to join us this morning as we worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I would like to invite you to join us again online next Sunday for our Palm Sunday service. In Psalm 137, verse 4, we hear a plaintive cry from the psalmist. How can we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? This is a mournful cry of someone who knew hard times, whose life was unsettled and filled with worry and fear. How can we sing the Lord's song in a new land? In many ways, we find ourselves at home with these words as well, don't we? Our lives have been upended so drastically and so quickly that we too wonder if we are living in a foreign land. And if so, can we still sing the Lord's song? I pray that in the course of this worship service, you'll be able to reflect on these difficult times in the light of the grace of God, that you will get in touch with the ultimate reality of life, the reality that we are the objects of God's enduring and saving, hopeful grace and love, and that you will discover that while hard times are hard, God remains with us, even in a foreign land, and that with God's abiding presence and love, we can still sing the Lord's song. Let us pray. Lord, as we gather in worship, lift our spirits, renew our hearts and minds, and grant us hope and peace. Amen.
Believe it or not, this is the fifth Sunday of Lent. And during Lent, we have remembered the events that led Jesus to his crucifixion. Jesus came into the world to bring hope and light, but at every turn there were those who sought to extinguish that light. Jesus came to create new relationship between God and human beings, but there were those who had other ideas. Because he could not be manipulated, they sought to kill him. A sanctuary is a place set aside for sacred things. It is a place of refuge and protection. This room is a sanctuary. This season of Lent, as hard as it has been, is a kind of sanctuary extended in time. And one of the things that Lent teaches us is that we, is that you, are a sanctuary too. There is a place inside of you for sacred things, a place where God abides. As we extinguish this fifth light, we acknowledge the darkness and pain of the world and share together in the affirmation of our faith clinging once again to hope in the ever-growing darkness. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We went for a walk today. We walked into the sanctuary and it was empty, silent, still. The fellowship hall was the same way. It wasn't even set up for worship. We went for a walk today. We walked to the Sunday school classrooms, and even though they were empty, we caught a glimpse of something. We went for a walk today. We walked down to the youth room. We went looking for something we left behind, and instead, we found you. We went for a walk today and found you. We saw the joy, curiosity, and laughter you bring to the campus. We found your presence still here. We saw the Ingalls and Pretties, who always sit a few rows back on the right. We saw the back row ladies, who sit on the back row always. We saw the families walking down the hall of the Sunday school together. We heard the sounds of teaching and singing coming from our worship spaces. We saw, heard, and felt the presence of you. Our building may be physically empty, but we are one in the Spirit. The Spirit of God who is present when we are together is still present when we are apart. That same Spirit reminds us that we are connected through time and space. It's that same Spirit, God's Spirit, that remind us that even through time and space we are stronger together and we thank God every time we remember you. As we pray today, I invite us to join together in prayer uh, responsively as you're watching this at home by responding to uh, Lord in your mercy and then you say the words or silently say the words, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, first, first and foremost on our minds and hearts is the crisis we are currently facing. We know you hold all things in your care and keeping. And so we commend to you just now all those who are victims of the uh, COVID-19 virus, uh, for all those families that are wrestling with uh, uh, loved ones who are ill or sick. Uh, we pray for all of those families who are also keeping to the very best practices, staying in, staying put, uh, keeping our distance one from another. We ask that you would bless this effort as we seek to 
uh, dampen the effects of this, uh, this virus, this outbreak, and do all that we can to keep ourselves well and to keep others safe and well. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we pray for those who are on the front lines in this battle, uh, for all of our healthcare professionals, researchers, doctors and nurses, those who attend to clinics and hospitals and other places where sick folks are coming for care. Lord, we pray also for our government leaders in this fight as they seek to marshal the resources necessary uh, to bring uh, healing and care to your children who are suffering. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Oh Lord, we pray for our congregation as we seek to hold together and stay together, even as we stay put. Uh, help us in our connections. By your Holy Spirit, Lord, keep us connected one to another. Remind us that we are one in Christ Jesus. Uh, and let us utilize every means at our disposal that you've provided to stay connected through social media, uh, through the phone, email, text, and whatever ways that we can do so to lift each other up and support each other. Uh, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those in our own congregation, Lord, who are most vulnerable, and ask that you would, uh, again, guide us as we seek to protect them and care for them and love them. Help them all to know, help all of us to know that we're not alone and that you're present to us and that we are with one another even as we are physically apart and supporting each other in every way. Let our prayers mingle with your spirit that we would become in your name a living sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things, O oh Lord, we give you thanks for. And trusting in you, we are bold to bring ourselves before your throne of grace. And even as we offer the prayer, uh, the, uh, in the words that your son, Jesus Christ, taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Today is the fifth Sunday of Lent. We've made it. Our fifth Sunday of wandering in the wilderness together and our third Sunday of worship together from a social distance. It's hard and it's been hard. But survival in the wilderness is not for the faint of heart. Who knew that four months ago when we decided and chose Adam Hamilton's The Walk as our focus for Lent, looking at five essential practices of the Christian walk, that this fifth practice of share would take on a new meaning. Our scripture this morning comes from Matthew 4 and Matthew 28, looking at the ways that God has called us to share our faith. So follow along on the screen as Dana and Angie read it for us. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So I want to start this morning very quickly running through where we've been. Because for each of the essential practices, we've had two dimensions. One where we do them together and one where we do them separately. So we started with worship and we looked at how important it is to gather together one day in seven, whether online or in person, and we pray and we sing and we listen for God to speak to us. It's this place where we are recharged and renewed and sent out back into the world to share and to live our lives. And we know that our individual act of worship is through prayer. We were challenged to pray five times a day. And at the core of worship are two words, thank you. The second practice was study. Scripture is the primary way that God speaks and that we found that we need to be seeking and listening to God through small groups and on our own. 
reading five verses a day or maybe more where we are asking God, speak to me. I am listening to what you have to say. The third week was all about serving God. A community, as a community, we come together and we pool our resources. And we see this through mission trips and cooking for hope and backpack ministry and work days. Those are just a few of the ways that our church is serving our community. Individually, five acts of kindness a week. Now, this past week, I asked for just to see what was happening in our community to feel connected to you. And Phil sent me this photo. And he wrote, my mom was in a car accident three weeks ago in and out of the hospital several times and then to rehab. Our church members and Agape kids responded with kindness. Mom was and is still tremendously grateful for the many cards and prayers. Prayers for other is amazing to lift up another person and actually have someone feel those prayers. Our God is a great God and we have an awesome church family. Small, tiny acts of kindness. Last week, we talked about giving, where we combine all that we have and we share for the ministries of the church. Yes, sometimes that means we have to pay for the light bill, but that also means that we get to do amazing and wonderful things with our children and our youth and our adults and our music ministry. All of these things support it as we pool and share together in our generosity. And so every month, we were encouraged and challenged to do five acts of extraordinary generosity Something that is over and above, something that then becomes what is meant to be our way of life. And all of this leads us to today, our last essential practice of this series, sharing our faith and letting our light shine, telling other people the good news. Now, this one is probably the most uncomfortable. I know that it is for me, even though this is what I do on Sunday morning, because I've seen so many others do it so poorly and they're so pushy and obnoxious. Because there are two things, right, that we're taught not to talk about. One is religion and the other is politics. We are literally trained not to talk about our faith. But that's not what God is calling us to do. Christians believe that Jesus was God's response to the human condition. God saw the brokenness, the pain, darkness, hurt, the lovelessness that was in the world and sent Jesus. God sent Jesus to communicate a message of in his life and death and resurrection, because Jesus is the answer to those deepest, darkest questions that we have and is the fulfillment of our deepest longing. Jesus came, lived, died, was raised from the dead, and then, then he said, now you have to go tell somebody. And this wasn't just a call and a directive for preachers, but this is for everybody. As a Christian, you have something that other people need, and God is asking you to share it. Jesus began his ministry by calling the disciples, come and follow me. I will make you fish for people. Then he says, you are the light of the world. Just like a city on a hill can't be hidden. Go and let your light shine so that everyone, everyone around you can see it. And then Jesus said this, look at the harvest around us. All of these people, the least, the last, the lost, and the lonely. He says to the disciples, the harvest fields are ripe and they are ready for harvest but where are the workers? Pray that the Lord of the harvest will send out workers. And who are those workers? They are you and me. They are us together. Right before his ascension, Jesus told the disciples to go into all the world, make disciples and baptize them. Teach them what I have taught you. And at the same time, but written in the book of Acts, Jesus says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. This was really important to Jesus. He has called us to share the good news. But what are we supposed to be sharing? What is the good news? Christian Century wrote an article back in 2012 called The Gospel in Seven Words. And they invited authors and theologians to proclaim the gospel in a maximum of seven words. I want to share some of those with you this morning. Martin Marty, who teaches church history at the University of Chicago, said, God, through Jesus Christ, welcomes you anyhow. Beverly Roberts Gaventa, New Testament professor at Princeton, says, In Christ, God's yes defeats our no. And one of my favorite by a Lutheran pastor and writer, Nadia Boltz Weber, she crafted, we are who God says that we are. 
Now, each one of these is theologically rich and could take another 2,000 words to unpack, but they are just a simple structure to help us open up a new conversation. Maybe seven words isn't enough. Maybe you need a whole sentence. Or how about what's your elevator speech? Could you explain why and what you believe from the first floor to the 10th floor with maybe just a few stops in between? Because people care about your personal story and your experience. They want to hear about your faith journey. How does your faith in Jesus make a difference in your life? Now, the best form of witnessing happens way before you say any words. St. Francis of Assisi has a famous quote, you may know it. Preach the gospel all the time, and only when you have to, use words. You are preaching and living a sermon all the time. By how you treat other people, by how you love and care for them, and right now in this world, what you share on social media. And then somewhere along the way, comes this moment for you to be able to share in words. Just like all the other essential practices, we share in two ways, together and individually. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says this, found in Matthew chapter 5, You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. So here, the word you in Greek is actually plural. And it's not meaning you alone, but with you and a bunch of other people, you all let your light shine. This is the very idea of doing things in community together. So an example of this, many of us have been to a candlelight service, whether that's here at Jamestown or somewhere else. And we start with one candle lit from the Christ candle, and it's passed to the ushers and other pastors, and then it passes person to person, dispelling the darkness. And as we sing that final verse of Silent Night, we raise our candles high. This is the very image of Jesus's words. You together are the light of the world. You are to go out and push the darkness back. And when we do it together, it's remarkable what happens. When we do it together, we are sharing a witness to the community that amazing things can and do happen. Now, many things as we share our faith, we do together, and sometimes we do them on our own as well. And sometimes they go hand in hand and merge together, and we as a faith community, as the church, help equip you as you share your faith. When there is a cantata or an Easter event or the pumpkin patch or trunk or treat, all of these different events, we sometimes create something on Facebook to invite people, or we create a flyer and we ask you to give it away. We create that not just so you know what's going on, but so that you truly will give it away to someone else. Give it to someone who has kids or has adults who love music and let them experience the love of community and the love of Christ. And then maybe, maybe they'll come back on a Sunday morning again and again. Paul says in 2 Corinthians, so we are ambassadors for Christ since God is making his appeal through us. Every single one of us is an ambassador for Christ. We represent and represent Jesus to people and our community. God is making God's appeal for the healing and reconciliation and redemption of humanity through us. So I want you to pause for a moment and maybe even pause this video if you need a little longer to grab a pen and paper if you don't have it nearby. And I want you to write down the names of people who are most responsible for you being at church, being in church. The people who are responsible for where you are in your own faith journey. I'm going to give you 15 seconds to write it down. I don't know about you, but if it wasn't for the people on this list, I don't know that I would be here. Maybe that's the same for you. Somebody or somebody shared their faith with you and you were changed. Sharing our faith can be as simple as letting someone know that they crossed your mind while you were praying for them. And now you are curious if there's anything that you can do for them. 
Maybe you share something that touched you that happened at church on Facebook or social media, and then you invite people to come with you the next time that it happens. Here are some other examples. You meet together with your people, just like these ladies did, checking in on each other during this season of life and talk about how God is showing up. How is it with your soul? You sit with your family and watch medias, watch videos from Write Down Media and post what your kids are learning about Jesus. Share images of nature around your house and speak to how God is revealing God's self to you right now. This is a witness in art. These kids, these kids they took some time this week, I love this, took some time this week to make their own stained glass design. People who see the cross on this house will know that all who live there are persons of faith. And I think that begs the question, since we are living in an online world right now, do people on your Facebook, your Twitter, your Instagram, your TikTok, your LinkedIn, all your email, all the things, do they have any clue that you are a person of faith? Because if they don't, you are missing out. I want to close this morning with our challenges. Five times a month, do or say or post something that people might know that you are a Christian. And invite five people to church each year. If just we, just those, the average attendance on Sunday morning, if just those of us that come regularly invited five people to church, we will have invited 1,500 people to church over the course of one year. And those five people are searching for the same thing that we were so long ago, life in Jesus Christ. And my hope is that years from now, when someone else is listening to a sermon like this, that it will be your name that is written down. That you were the one who impacted someone, else face, someone else's faith journey. So let us share our faith. Let us continue to walk faithfully, practicing the five, these five essential practices long beyond and past the season of Lent. And let us share our faith and let us help other people find what we all desperately long for, life in Jesus Christ. So JJ, how was your youth meeting this on Sunday? It was fantastic. You know, we had lots of kids show up. We even had adults show up. Uh, we got to have our regular youth meeting uh, as if we were here, but it was all online. That's um, awesome. It, it, made, it made for a great time of still getting to connect with everyone. And yeah. I uh, just feel like we're together even though we're not together. Yeah, that is awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. How about you? You had I know. children's I got to on Wednesday. With the, yeah, I had children's Bible study. I got to connect with some of the children yeah. and their families, and it was so good. They got to see each other's faces and laugh and to get to talk about the weeks and how it's so different not being in school yeah. and, you know, still having the homework, but, you know, not being in school and not seeing each other. So it was a gift to yes. be able to be together, even if it wasn't in person. Yeah. So, yeah. It's kind of hard being not being in person because we end up with... Empty offering plates. Oh dear. But we need we need money in these, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we need money to keep the ministries of the church going. We yeah. do, we do. You know, we're still ministering just uh, online now, rather yes. than getting together. We're still mm -hmm. ministering virtually, and so if they still cost, we still have to keep the computers running and everything running. And we so, do. yeah, we still we still need offerings to keep the ministry of the church going. Yeah. Oh, and did you hear that we're still getting we're still having cooking for hope? Yeah, really? I know, which oh, is awesome. Yes. That well, we're still we definitely got to have some money to yeah, pay for to, the materials and the food for yeah. that so we can Get minister to our community just beyond the walls of the church mm -hmm. here we could go out to our community still and yeah. help feed those who are maybe struggling in this financial yeah, and time really depend on the, the food yeah. every month so yeah. yeah it's a great great blessing to the community yes. and to us so yes yeah well i guess send your money yeah we'll take our offering empty offering yeah. plates and go please give <laughs> i gotta go online online give online <laughs> Or donate through the mail, UPS or USPS, <laughs> whichever way you prefer. Just, just help us out. We'd love, we'd love to receive it. Yeah. <laughs>
Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. May the peace of Christ go with you. Good morning, JUMC family. This is Mark and Kat coming to you from our home here in Thomasville. Originally this afternoon at 3 o'clock, we had planned on doing the hymn sing out of the church with Mike Jenkins at the piano and Kat and I singing. However, because of the stay-at-home order, we've decided we're going to do that right here in our house. And so today at 3 o'clock, we invite you to join us on Facebook Live. We will have somebody observing the comments to take the hymn suggestions, and we will sing as many hymns as you choose. We'll do just one verse so that you'll know the, uh, the words of it, and we'll go until you get tired of singing hymns. So I hope you'll join us today at 3 o'clock. Thanks. <laughs> 